kind of give you a quick review, make sure you have been going over your, um, you know, punctuation marks, how to use a comma, when to use a colon, when to use a semicolon, you know, so forth and so on. You've got to make sure tonight, make sure you go over all of those um, uh, punctuation marks for the English sections, okay? Um, the, the primary thing for the English section is if you, um, once you begin the English section, you don't have to try to, um, you don't have to read all of, let me see if I can get a pen. Okay, here we go. All right, see all of this right here? You don't have to read all of that stuff. That's not necessary. But what you want to read, make sure you read the sentence. For example, this is number one. This is underlined, right? Obsessive. Um, I didn't mean to highlight that whole thing. But notice the word obsessive is um, is underlined, okay? This is where they want you to focus, right? The word number one, obsessive. Okay, what you want to do, let me erase all of that, okay? Make sure when you're reading, you don't just read what number one is, which is obsessive. You wanna make sure you're reading the sentence that includes the underlying section, okay? I don't know if you guys have been practicing that, but make sure you do that on the test. See how I would read um, all of this to here, okay? To make sure what I've uh, just read makes sense. Because basically what I'm doing on the uh, English section is I'm editing, okay? So for example, what we would do here is, let's see if I, okay, good, I erased that off. Okay, so for example, I would start here at uh, why. Why is it that we are so completely obsessive with the hair on our heads? Now notice how uh, this particular word obsessive doesn't really make sense in this context. So what you want to do is now you want to pick a better choice. And if I go through my options, the best choice, if I switch it up, the best choice is B. Now I'll read it. Why is it that we are so completely obsessed with the hair on our heads? So the main thing is, guys, don't just go to number one, okay, just because that's what's underlined and just read that. That's not enough. You've got to read the sentence that has the underlined section, okay? Make sure you're paying attention to the verb tense in each passage because when you go from passage to passage, the verb tense can actually change. Um, notice how this particular passage, we notice how this verb is obsessed. Um, so we're probably gonna see a lot of past tense verbs, right? Okay, now look at number two. Number two, they've underlined pay the money. Well, obviously I can't just read pay the money. That's not enough. That's not going to help me. Um, make sure you think about when things are repetitive, um, basically saying the same thing in the same sentence, you want to get rid of anything that's repetition, okay? And number two is a perfect example. For example, if I start reading um, I could just start right here at whatever, okay? Uh, whatever you can do to hair, someone is willing to pay the money to do it. Well, in this particular sentence, um, since we're talking about pay, obviously I'm going to pay probably with money, right? So in this case, I don't need pay the money. I'll just use pay. Does that make sense to everybody? If it makes sense, just say yes, okay? Does that make sense, okay? Um, let's go down to number three. And we're not gonna do all of these because I realize it's about nine o'clock uh, where you guys are here in Las Vegas. It's only like, it's only seven o'clock. Um, 
So I, I'm not gonna keep you guys past at least 9.45, okay? Is this making sense? Okay, so for example, look at number three. Now, number three says for to be. Uh, and some of you have probably done this test and that's fine. It's just a quick review to kind of make sure you go in tomorrow and do exactly what you're supposed to do. You know, it'll be different passages, but it's the same, you know, it's the same strategies. No matter what they give you, it's the same strategies over and over again, okay? Uh, same concept. Okay, so number three, what they have underlined is for to be, all right? I can't just read for to be, that's not enough. That's that's not gonna make sense. I, I don't know what to pick. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna start right here where it says, natural redheads long for to be, brunettes and dish and dishwater blondes dream of shiny golden tresses. Well, obviously that sounds pretty odd, right? that for to be. Um, so what what would be a better choice for number three? What do you guys think? What would be a better choice? Because it's definitely not uh, no change. We're not gonna keep for to be, that doesn't make sense. Um, I think it should be C. What, what do you guys think, C? Yeah, I, I think C. Anybody think C? Mm -hmm. So natural redheads long to be. We don't need four brunettes and dishwater blondes, da 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 da, right? Okay. Um, let's do four. Remember, this test um, is dealing with grammar, punctuation, and word choice. Grammar, punctuation, and word choice. And like my, like I told my scholars. Um, who I was working with at Wilcox Central High School and LaFleur High School, the English section, you've got 75 questions, right? You've got 75 questions. Let me show you how they break this down. You, you've got 75 questions, okay? Now, about um, 15 of those questions deal with skills, okay? About 15 of those questions deal with skill, and I'm gonna show you what those are. Skill meaning, um, not skill, but organization, okay, organization. All right, so that means you've got 60 problems that hands down you should get correct, okay, with no, without a doubt, you should get, you should get those um, correct, okay, because these 15 that are dealing with organization, these are the ones where um, they ask a question like, what should the, you know, what if the author um, deletes a sentence? Where should sentence two go? Um, how should we end paragraph one? You know, those long questions. Well, it's about 15 of those. And those are the ones, and let me show you, those are the ones you actually want to skip and come back to those. Let me show you. How y'all doing? Y'all hanging in there with me? Um, Jerrica, if you're watching, if they have some questions, answer. Try to respond to them, please, for me, because I can't uh, really see. Okay, now this right here, like I said, you've got 75 questions. The English section is 45 minutes, which is plenty of time if you follow this strategy, okay? If you tackle your grammar, punctuation, and word choice problems, and this what I just put in green, these are the ones you want to skip and come back to because notice this is an organization question because it's asking you for the sake of lo logic, where should we place sentence five? So here's sentence five and notice this is number 11, okay? And this box right here, that box has 11, right? So this goes with this one. So when you do go back to number 11, this is what they're talking about, okay? Why do you need to skip these and work these last? Because you're gonna have to read through See this, that's sentence three, that's sentence four, this is sentence five, and they're asking you, where should we put sentence five? Does that make sense? Does that make sense to everybody? Um, let me see if I can see if I have a, a question on here. Does anybody have a question? And then we'll do, uh, we'll do a few more of the, um, of the English ones. We'll do a few more. Um, 
Anybody have any questions so far? If you do, drop them. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's um, that's called an organization question. It's about fifteen of those. Please make sure you skip those. Save those for last. Um, and let me show you another one. Okay. Okay. Here's a good one. They always ask these at the end, right? So look at 14. The writer is considering deleting, let's go right here. The writer is considering deleting the preceding sentence. Okay, this is 14. If he deletes it, they wanna know, well, what's gonna happen? Well, this one, we don't know what's gonna happen. We don't have time to waste. We're trying to get to our grammar, punctuation and word choice problems. So we're gonna come back to 14. And when we do come back to 14, this is 14 right here. See that box? So you gotta know, you gotta know your test. You gotta know your test, okay? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go over a little math and, uh, yes, ma'am, I'm gonna go over some math in just a second. Yes, subject verb agreement. Yeah, and like I said, make sure when you go from passage to passage, make sure you uh, are paying attention to your, your verbs, okay? Um, here's another one, then we'll move on to a little math. See this part right here? that says, which is not acceptable, pay attention to those, okay? And I think that's about it, okay? Uh, so make sure you go over your grammar, punctuation, and word choice um, items. Um, semicolon, semicolons, you have to have what? Two sentences, a sentence on the right, a sentence on the left. Um, apostrophes, you use apostrophes to show ownership and for contractions. If you see a contraction, make sure you say um, both words. Um, what's the next thing? Uh, commas, when you're working with commas. They should be used in a phrase, uh, items in a list, um, commas you can use to join two complete sentences, but you have to use a fanboy if you're joining two complete sentences with the commas, okay? Uh, let's do a little math, okay? Do y'all have your calculator out? Because I'm not gonna be able to talk and, and, and draw and, uh, and, and calculate stuff, okay? So, um, okay, so uh, rule of thumb, whenever you are working with, um, with fractions, when you're working with fractions, uh, change, change those fractions to either improper fractions or change them to, decimals, okay? So for example, my one, one and two thirds would be what? Somebody give me that. Uh, let's see, Shannon walked one and two third miles on Wednesday, two and three fifth miles on Thursday. What was the total? Okay, so, okay, here we go, guys. Jerrica, you got your calculator for me? Okay, two divided by three. Okay, that's 1.66, okay. And then what's three fifths? Three divided by five. Okay, that's 0.6. Okay, so somebody give me, what's 1.66, 1 1.66 plus, 2.6 equals four point, sorry, I don't have my uh, pointer thingy. Okay, so that's 4.26. So I know it's not that, I know it's not that, I know it's not this. So then what I would do is I could just say four divided by 15 and one divided by three. Um, I know it's not D because one third, that is 0.3. And then if I do four divided by 15, that's my 
uh, 0.26. So the answer here is C. So remember, when, whenever you're working with fractions, you can usually change them to a decimal and, and get your answer. So what I did, I changed one and two thirds to 1.66, two and three fifths to 2.6, added those together and got 4.26, narrowed my choices down. And all I did with the C and D answer choices, since both of them had a four in it, I did four divided by 15 and one divided by three. And C is the one that gave me uh, 4.26. Okay, let's look at number two. We'll do a few and then we'll do some science, a little science. Try to anyway. Okay, guys, there are definitely going to be exponents on the test. Um, what do we know about exponents? When you are adding and the bases are the same, uh, not when you're adding, when you're multiplying and the bases are the same, you add the exponents. When you are dividing and the exponents are the same, you subtract the exponents. Um, when you are, when you raise a power to another power, what do you do? You multiply the exponents, right? Okay, so what is this one going to be? Okay, so this is basically gonna be four times three times two, which is, uh, 24, so that's wrong and that's wrong. Got to do process of elimination. So I'm looking right here, right? And then I'll do, this is X to the third. This is um, X, that's understood as a one. And this is understood as a one. So how many X's do you have? You've got, yeah, yes, ma'am, Dallas. Uh, hey, Dallas. You add, you, you got it, girl, you add. So I'm gonna do three, this three, the X third, this X is understood as a one, that's understood as a one. So I've got three, four, five X's, so I know it's not that one. And then my Y's, I've got two, three, four, so the answer is J. So make sure you guys go over those exponent rules, okay? It's nothing but ladders. <laughs> Okay, um, it's okay. You can do it. You you can you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Okay, so let's do um let's see. Let's let's do a word problem. Okay, Mr. Wilk is a high school teacher. Hold on, let's see. Mr. Wilk is a high school teacher. Come on, thing. Hold on. Here we go. Okay, Mr. Wilk is a high school teacher um, whose salary is $33,660 for the school year, for the whole year, which has 180 days. In Mr. Wilk's school district, substitute teachers are paid $85 per day. If Mr. Wilk takes a day off without pay and a substitute teacher is paid to teach his classes, how much less does the school district pay in salary by paying a substitute teacher instead of Mr. Wilk for that day, okay? So let's see. Okay, so first let's see how much is he getting paid uh, for the year the the year is 180 days so let's do uh 33,600 y'all excuse this 33,660 divided by what 180 days right okay what's that going to be Anybody got their calculator? So that is $33,660 that he gets paid for the whole year. The whole year for him is 180 days. And <laughs> okay, hey, Amber. Good, you got C. It is C. It is C. 
Okay, so 33,000, hold on, I need to get my calculator. 33,660 divided by 180 equals 187. So Mr. Wilkes is getting paid $187 a day. And if we get a substitute teacher, the substitute teacher gets only $85, which means the school system does not, this is how much less they're paying if a substitute teacher comes in, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that one. That's C. Okay, let's find another one. Do another fractions, Dallas. Okay, let me see if I can find Let's see if I can find another fractions one. Uh, hold on. Let's see. Let's see here, guys. Here, let's do a um. Let's do this one, I'm trying to do a mixture of stuff. Let's do number six. Okay, so number six says a rectangular lot measures, um, a rectangular lot measures 125 feet by 185 feet. What is the length in feet of the perimeter? So. We've got 125, and this is simple. This is a simple problem. What are we gonna have to do? Somebody drop it in the comments. What do we have to do? Ooh, this, 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 I'm sorry. This is, um. so 185, 185, 125, 125. So what we do know is we have a rectangle and whatever the left is, the right is, and whatever the top is, the bottom is, okay? And okay, do number seven. Okay, and so if we add up all of these numbers, that should give us that should give us six hundred and twenty. A rectangular lot that measures. It says, "What is the length in feet of the fence? Completely fenced in." Okay, um, six, mm -mm, six is H. Okay, somebody said, let's do seven. We'll do seven and eight. Okay, seven is pretty simple. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to uh, draw out these. Um, right, right, Deshaun, you had to add up both, both sides, okay? We have to mark, C for everything, I think. Joshua? No, Joshua, you you don't, uh uh. You don't have to mark C for everything. Okay. Okay, let's look at seven. Y'all got your paper and pencil for seven. Seven, you've got uh you've got brackets and you've got um and you have parentheses. Okay, you've got brackets and you've got parentheses okay um anybody want to take a chance at seven what do you guys think about seven alasia janet yeah you could have multiplied mm -hmm. you could have done 125 times two 185 times two that is correct mm -hmm. yeah uh the mandra yes you just added the size because that was basically uh perimeter perimeter Okay, so what what do you guys think about seven? C, somebody said C. Eight is B. Okay, let's see. No, wait a minute, eight. Eight is B. Braxton, eight, eight doesn't have a B, honey. Do you mean G? Okay, yeah. Seven, seven is C. 
Okay, so basically all we did for uh, seven, notice everything, everything, we basically distributed the A to everything, okay? So that's, that's C. Okay, guys, yes, seven is C. Okay, let's look at... Eight. Did anybody do eight? Somebody said something. Uh, I, somebody said eight was B, but we don't have a B. Um, mm -mm. Seven is seven is C. Seven is C. Uh huh. Here it is. Seven is C. We distributed the eight, the A, the A to everything. Okay. All right. Let's look at eight. Let's look at eight. Let's look at eight. Okay, 6x minus 3 equals negative 5x plus 7. What you guys got for that one? What you guys got for that one? What you guys got for 8? Okay. All right, so simple. Um, I'm going to just do it from here. Let me blow this up a little bit. Let's just go from here on this side. Okay, so of course, combining like terms, this and that. We know that X's are gonna go with X's, the whole numbers are gonna go with the whole, the integers, right? So the one thing we can do is we can, um, let's add five X to both sides real quick. We're just doing this just for review. I know this is simple to uh, most people, but you know, some people forget, you know, what to do. So let's be gentle. Okay, cancel out, and then what is 6x plus 5x? That's 11x, right? Right, that's 11x. And then I still have my negative three, keep it. And then I'm still left with my seven. And then what do I do? Oh, good, y'all got it. I, I stop. <laughs> okay. That's what's up. Y'all got it. It's, it's G. I'm going to just stop. Okay. And well, I guess I'll go on for those who don't know. That's plus three. And then that's plus three. I'll be fair. That's plus, plus three. Cancel and then bring down my 11x equals 10 and divide both sides by 11. Cool, y'all got it. Let me see what else I got. Okay. Uh, no, that's G. It's definitely G. Okay, let me go. Eh. Let's see. Now, nine, I'm not going to do nine, but let me just show you something. I'll tell you the answer to nine. But nine is just one of those where, let me show you. Nine is one of those, you could just kind of play with the numbers since it's a pattern. See how it's 13, blank, blank, 34. This is one of those, just take that calculator, plug in what they have, work it backwards, um, substitute what they have and see if you can get the difference in in uh in what they are in basic this one here nine is b but what i would do with that one is i would just play with the numbers and see what the difference is right um and and that's simple okay oh let's do so let's do a radical let's do a radical how about that let's do this and then we'll try to find a um uh then we'll try to find a couple of uh, angles and, and, and triangles and stuff and uh, a little sine and cosine. I never seen so many black kids working. <laughs> you got that right, LaFrancis. They got, they ready for this. They ready for this. They, they, they ready, they ready. Okay, so what, what, what are we gonna do with this guys? We've got X cubed equals 729. Then X squared, plus radical x. So what what are we gonna do? Hmm. What 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 y'all think? Can we go over some size problems? Yeah, we're gonna go over, honey. Give me a second. Give, just give me a minute. I'm trying to 
hit everybody. Okay, so first thing, somebody, first thing we need to do is get the cube of 729. What's the cube? Ooh, some got on me. I know radicals are the worst, but you could do it. Somebody give me the cube. Y'all gonna make me do all the work. Y'all gonna make me, did anybody give it? Is it nine? Okay, so the cube root of 729 is nine. Then you substitute. So then nine squared plus, we just put it in, right? Y'all see what we did? So the first thing we did was this. We got the cube root of 729 and it is nine, okay? And then we got uh, substitute, right? So what's nine squared? Nine squared is 81. What is the square root of nine? Square root of nine is three. Answer is what? Mm -hmm. 84. Who got that already? Who got that already? That's good. Okay, let me try to find. Let me see. Let me try to find at least a couple of triangles, guys. I, we, we can't do it all. I wish I could. Oh, I wish I could, but math, it's just so... Okay, look, look, look. Got a probability. Got a probability one. Let's do a probability real quick. Here we go. So we've done fractions. We've done a couple of radicals. Okay. Probability. Okay, y'all gonna help me with this one. Um, and like I said, guys, I my timing is off today because I just came here to Las Vegas for a business conference and um, my timing is, is crazy. Okay, and I can't keep y'all up. Y'all gonna get me in, tr in trouble. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, so if a gum ball is randomly chosen from a bag that contains six yellow, anybody adding these up for me? Six yellow, five green, four red. What is the probability that the gum ball chosen is not green? Anybody add those up for me? All these comedians. Who on here acting up? Who? Rakira, who? Who who acting up? Probability, but probability is not that hard. It's not that hard. Did anybody add up all the numbers for me? That's the question. Did anybody add the numbers up? Six yellow, five green. Y'all making me do all the work. Six yellow, five green. Well, somebody done just do the answer up there. Okay, we got two different answers. Okay. So six, five, four, okay, so somebody said, all right, it's 15, great. 15 in all, so my in all number goes at the bottom. So what's the probability of not getting uh, a green? So it's six yellow, four red, so six plus four is 10, great. I think somebody got it already. That's going to be um, two thirds. Awesome. Probability is simple as long as you give them what you what they ask for. Okay, let me try to find something else, guys. Something else. Something else. So we can do. Um, let's see. Trying to find. Okay, here we go. Let's do a little sine, cosine, tangent. Sine, cosine, tangent. Try to, um, I may come up there and do 22. And that slope, I may do that slope too. Okay, look guys, Sokotoa, y'all know what this is? Somebody give me what number 24 is real quick. What's 24? Looking for the tangent. What's the this opposite over what? 
opposite over what? <laughs> Y'all on here cutting up. Somebody just saying all kind of stuff. Okay, percentage. Okay. Rakira, let what you may on your ACT. I'm trying to see some. Okay. Uh, real quick, somebody give me 24. What's 24? What's 24? What's 24? What is the tangent? Tangent B. Here's B. Angle B. Tangent is what? Opposite over adjacent. And it is uh, what? Opposite is C. Adjacent is A. So it's C over A. J, and anybody get that? Y'all so busy fussing. <laughs> y'all so busy fussing at each other. I need y'all to drop these answers down here for me. Let's do this. Uh, look, look at this one. Look at this one. This is simple. Look at 23. Let me show you something. Look at 23. This is nothing but a classic substitution problem. Y'all see this? Let me blow it up a little bit. 23. I was doing some like this. I was doing some like this. Now look, y'all y'all got to get this kind of stuff right here. Y'all see 23? It says, which of the following is a solution to the equation x squared plus 25 uh x equals zero you see this x squared plus 25 x equals zero basically all they're saying is how how what can we substitute these x's for to make this equal zero but guess what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just use the options i'm gonna just work it backwards i'm gonna just plug it in okay to uh to see which one uh works okay and the only one that'll work, like once you get through all of these, let's say for example, let's say we say it's uh, negative five. Okay, so if we say negative five squared plus, and it's, it's not five, I'm just showing you something. And 25, and that X means put the negative five here. Now, what I'm saying is, negative five is gonna make that equal zero. Actually, it's not. So negative five times negative five is what? That's 25 plus 25. What's 25 times five? Okay, now somebody on here talking bad. Don't, don't, don't be on my, don't be, come on now. Come on. Y'all yeah, be respectful to each other. Negative 25. Now watch this, this is not five plus negative 25, it's not zero, guess what? That's not my choice, that's not my answer. None of these actually work. Once you plug in all of those, the only one that's gonna give you that zero at the end is the uh, negative 25. Okay, real quick guys, let me try to do one more with some angles and we got to, uh, cause it's getting late. It's almost 10 where y'all are. Um, hold on. Let me see. Let's see. Uh, trying to do one that I can write the numbers on. Okay. Let's see. Hold on. Okay, let's just, let's go to some of the science real quick. Okay, guys, so listen with the, because uh, I want to stop it in about 10 minutes. This is almost 10 where you guys are. Okay, so with the reading, make sure you read the first five lines to decide what you want to read because um, like I always tell my scholars, 
You don't have to read the passages in order. So when they tell you to begin, you want to decide what you want to read, okay? Um, let me go back to this real quick. The first passage is always fiction. Um, the second, and you're gonna have 10 questions. The second passage is always social studies or like a geography, social science passage. Read the first five lines. See if you wanna read that one first, second, or third. The third passage is always a humanities passage. Once again, read through the first five lines to see if you wanna read that third. You may wanna read it first. It's up to you, it's your test. You don't have to read them in order, okay? The next passage, which is the last passage, and those people who like science, you may wanna read this first, okay? So here we go. First five lines. Bottom line, and of course on the live, I can't really do reading, uh, giving you reading passages. Uh, I'll just give you the strategies. The bottom line with the, with the reading is pick your passage. Don't read the questions first because that's a big no-no. You're going to uh, make a huge mistake by reading the questions first. I know a lot of teachers say read the questions first. I highly, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really against that because um, usually if you read the questions first, you're going to end up just trying to find the answers, okay? And when you're reading, you can mark on your paper. You can notate, you know, circle names and dates and locations, anything that you feel like is important because it's probably going to be in a question and that's going to give you something um, to go back and look at. And then the next thing while you're reading, you need to be paying attention to the author's tone, pay attention to you know main ideas, different things like that. And whenever they tell you to go back to a certain line, just go back to a certain line. The other thing, you wanna spend your first 30 minutes on the reading test. Spend your first 30 minutes reading the three passages that you decided to read, okay? that you decided to read first, second, and third. I mean, you can make like a 27 um, just by doing really well on three passages. You can make a 27 on the reading section easily. Okay, um, so let me see what, okay. I got 738, so you guys have 938. Okay, let's look real quick. Uh, we won't do a lot of the science, but I'm just gonna tell you what to look at and uh, hopefully this will help you out a little bit. Um, basically on the science, don't start, <coughs> excuse me. On the science, don't start off reading. See all of this right here? Don't start off reading all of that, okay? That's going to be a huge no-no. Don't start reading all of that. Um, what you want to do, and basically this is just strategy, strategy for the science, okay? Don't start off reading all of that. Um, start looking at the tables, okay? The science is really, is not that difficult. If you pay attention when you first start, pay attention to your tables. This, I have table one, table two, and table three. And that's usually where most of your answers are going to come from. Um, Cladarius, um, I, I don't really, I, I don't really like to tell people to pick C or B um, because you have A, B, C, D, and then you have those other letters, you know? Um, if all else fails, I always tell students, don't leave anything blank. Just don't, just before it's time to, um, before it's all over, don't just, uh, don't leave anything blank. I'll say that, don't leave anything blank, okay? Now, somebody said, am I telling you not to read the passages? No, I'm definitely not telling you not to read the passages. What I'm telling you to do is to pick what you want to read, okay? You have three 
you have 30 minutes, okay? Let me show you why I'm telling you this. You have 30 minutes and you have 40 questions, okay? What you need to do is pick what you want to read. And you do that within the first minute. When they tell you to begin your test, you need to be proactive and you need to decide what you want to read, okay? Here, you'll have passage one. And I would read through the first five lines of passage one. Then I would go to passage two, read through those first five lines. It's sort of like you're, you're trying to figure out what you, you know, kind of like a movie. You, you see a preview of the movie and you can decide instantly, okay, I'm gonna go see that. So when you're reading through your passages, just the first five lines, okay? When they tell you to begin, read through the first five lines and you can decide what you want to read first, second, and third. Uh, yeah, you're going to see all of this. You're going to have four passages. And listen, guys, on the reading, don't read the questions first, okay? Um, okay, so let's go. Now, the, back to the science, make sure you focus on the tables and the figures, okay? Focus on the tables and the figures. Let me show you this one. The one that's all text, like this one right here, make sure you re do this one last because this one usually has um, more questions and it's usually more difficult. Um, count you get, they only count what you get right. There's a penalty. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, don't, um, don't, yeah, just make sure you don't leave anything blank. Don't leave anything blank, okay? Mm hmm. Hey, Sade, she said this is not going to help you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know who that is. But, but yeah, make sure you don't leave anything blank. That's the, that's the main thing. Okay. Okay. Now, when you go to, these other, let's see, once again, with the science, make sure you pay attention to the tables, okay? And somebody, somebody just said they made a 20, they made a 26 on the ACT and they don't really consider what I'm saying. Um, but that's okay because see, there are some students who have 14s and 15s on the ACT and, and everybody won't make a 26 the first time. So that's, that's good, that's good for you, but that's not the case for everybody. So let's be respectful to those people who are, are struggling with the test. Okay. Um, and, and again, with the, with the, um, Thank you, Jawan. <laughs> you know, there, you know what? No matter what you do, there's always going to be someone negative. And um, I'm good with that. You know, I'm good with that. I, I actually, um, you know, I just traveled here to Las Vegas uh, from Mobile. And I promised, you know, my scholars that I would come on here and you know, review the ACT with them because a lot of them have to take the ACT tomorrow. So, um, you know, I'm just doing what I do. You know, I've been working with students for over 20 years, been doing ACT test prep for uh, six years now. So when people come, and, and a lot of people will come and say, um, you know, I made a 26 the first time, I ain't need any help. I made a 27 the first time, I ain't need any help. But that's not the case for everybody. <laughs> that's just not the case for everybody. Everybody's not going to make a 26, 27 the first time. You know, uh, I've seen kids come to me with a 13. They go from a 13 to a 20. Uh, kids go from a 10 to a 20. You know, yes, composite score 10, composite score 13. So, you know, it's just a little rude when, um, 
people come, you know, on a live and you're trying to help uh, students and then all of a sudden they're the expert in, in saying, you know, different things that, you know, I made this and I made that and what she's talking about is, you know, that's, that's crazy to me. But listen, guys, uh, it's almost 10 o'clock. And like I said, ending up with the, the science, just make sure you focus on the tables and the charts. Make sure you focus on the tables and the charts, okay? Don't try to read through, because the science section is not a reading test. Um, and the good thing about the, the science section is it's going to, um, it's, it's going to, basically tell you where to look as far as um, the questions go. The questions are going to tell you where to look. They'll say stuff like, um, based on passage one, based on, on passage two, you know, that kind of thing. So make sure you focus on um, those tables and charts, okay? Um, any questions? I hope this helped. Um, shout out to Lil Skull, Lil Skull Jermaine Brown. Got those four points up on his ACT. He'll be going to um, UAB full ride. So excited for him. And uh, I hope this helped you guys. Um, come and hang out with me. Uh, I'm located in Mobile right now. I'm in Las Vegas. Um, and I would love to have you guys to come and hang out with me. And um, I mean, this is just a quick review. Um, of course, some students may need a little more help, especially with the math. You're welcome, Briar. You're welcome. You're welcome, guys. Destiny. Hey, Cameron. You're welcome. Um, and that math, the math is, uh, trust me, don't, don't beat yourself up over the math. Don't beat yourself up over the math because that math section is it's a beast. You know, a, a lot of students have to, you know, get, uh, you know, some, a, a lot of one-on-one -on -one extensive help. So Jemiah, you're welcome, Kendall. You're welcome, you're welcome. Like I said, I know this was so quick. This was super quick. Test tomorrow. Um, best wishes to you guys. Um, make sure you go ahead and, you know, get a shower, go to bed, uh, wake up, eat your little breakfast. Don't eat anything super, super sweet uh, because that'll make you, you know, really tired and exhausted. You're welcome. You're welcome, guys. And um, thank you, Alexis. Thank you, Nashon. Hey, Nashon, my friend and at Wilcox. Uh, I was thinking three sausage McGriddles and it's... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, just get you something. Just get you something, guys. Um, thanks for hanging out with me and uh best wishes to you. Uh, if you ever need anything, make sure you are, are hanging out in my Facebook group, which is ACT and College Ready. Make sure you're hanging out there with me. I drop a lot of scholarship information. Um more test prep tips, a lot of free stuff. If you're a mobile, uh, leading up to the June and July test, if you want some practice tests, let me know. Come by my office and I'll be glad to um, get some practice tests to you, okay? Hey, Jerrica, we have some people ask. Oh, yes, can you pin it, Jerrica? I'm just talking, I can't even hardly see. Thank you, Deshaun, you're welcome. You're welcome, Brandon. <laughs> Jemiah, <laughs> you're going to get an all-star meal from the Waffle House. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> mm, I'm going to save it. I'm going to keep it up. I'm going to keep it up. Um, yeah, Jericho, pin my website, uh, www.westinstructionalservices.net. So do they only count the right ones, not the wrong ones? Well, um. See, I've heard mixed. I've I've heard mixed things on that, uh, Jemaya. Um, whatever you get, this is what people say. They say that whatever you get wrong, you're not penalized for. 
but they count what you got right. And then that's how the, you get your score. I don't really know what that means. Um, I know in order to benchmark for the English, the benchmark is 18. Um, the benchmark for math is a 22. The benchmark for, for uh, reading is a 22. The benchmark for science is a 23. Um, now this will help you. This will help you. The, the math, you have 60 questions, right? You have 60 questions on the math, um, but you only need to get, I think, 32 right. You have to get 32 correct. So that's not bad. 32 out of 60. I think I'm saying that right. Uh, you made an 18 the last time. Okay, okay. Did you make an 18 on your composite, Jemiah? Was that overall or? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jerrica, for posting the website. Yes, pray, pray, God bless them. Please, Jesus, bless them, God, to, to do marvelous things. I know you guys can do it. Yes, pray, I'm gonna say a prayer for you. I need a cigarette. No, Braxton, don't get don't get a cigarette. <laughs> don't get a cigarette. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't 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 make them drive you to smoking. <laughs> Just to tell y'all no if you fail the ACT. Well, boys, you can't really fail the ACT. What it is, they call it a benchmark. Uh, my teacher said 34 correct for math. 30 <sighs> Christian, I think it's 32. I don't have my book right in front of me, but I, I know it's a little more than half. I know it's a little more than writing penalties. Writing, um, the writing section, TQ, uh, the writing section, this is the, the main thing for the writing. Writing is simple. Um, Jamea, oh, I, I don't know. Jamaya White and Jamaya Monet. I don't know. I think it's like two or three Jamayas on here. Okay, so TQ, the writing section, this is simple for those of you who are still hanging on with me. Um, the main thing for the writing, make sure you do a quick outline. Uh, do your quick outline. Whatever the question is that they're asking you, make your stance. Uh, you know, basically, you want to um, pick a side. You got what I'm saying? This is with the writing. You want to pick a side. And once you pick your side based on the prompt, do you a really quick um, outline, okay? This is the thing with the writing. The, the best part about the writing is you're not penalized for your opinion. You're not penalized for your, yes, the writing is very easy. You're not penalized for your opinion, um, but you're penalized if you switch up your viewpoint. You got what I'm saying? So for example, if they give you a question about, you know, who's the, which team, which team was the best, uh, NBA team of all times. Okay, you can't you can't start off talking about Chicago Bulls and then start saying, well, but the Golden State Warriors, they're awesome too. Well, okay, wait a minute, you just switched up. You got what I'm saying? You just kind of switched up um your stance or your view viewpoint. So as far as the writing goes, pick your viewpoint, stick to it, um, do a quick outline. And then just put in your, whatever your opinion is, just give something to back it up, give a few little details. You can throw in some personal touches as well. They love when you throw in some uh, personal points. They love that, okay? Um, and two people actually read your, your writing. Did you guys know that? Two people actually score your writing and the highest score on the writing um is a 12 so yeah the the writing is, is is pretty simple just stick to your view stick to your viewpoint and put in a few um personal things Jalen Marche <laughs> I'm gonna have gray hair by the time I'm done with this ACT don't say that Ernestine no um the writing 
the writing is not one to 10. You, the high score for the writing is a 12. Each person who scores the writing, um, they can only give you up to a six, six points. Mm hmm. Mm, I'm gonna do good on writing. Point Dexter talk from bell to bell. Okay, good, Jemaya White. That's awesome. The books are available on the website. Yes. Okay. Yes. Pick one viewpoint. Mm hmm. Stick to your view. How many paragraphs does it have to be? Jay Taylor, paragraphs. Um, as far as the writing goes, you need a thesis. Give your, your thesis statement and your introduction, and you can really uh, reiterate what the prompt is, okay? You can reiterate what the prompt is. So your first paragraph should be your thesis and your intro. Then you need to do maybe three body paragraphs explaining what your intro and thesis was, and then uh, a conclusion. Your conclusion is super simple. Your conclusion is going to basically uh, close out what your prompt was, what your viewpoint was, and summarize what you just said. You got what I'm saying? So I would do five, um, but no less than four total. I would do five, but no less than four total. So intro, which is a thesis and your, your stance or your viewpoint, then three body, okay? And then fifth one, your conclusion, right? Okay, guys. Okay, it was, was that it? Does, does, does anybody have any more questions? So if I, I, I would do five. I would do, <laughs> Jemiah White, you can do it. <laughs> well, let's, at least four. Don't, don't do less than four. Now you can't go, writing an essay with just two or three paragraphs now come on you can do at least five you can do at least do four at least the writing is score separate yes Ernestine the writing is actually uh, a separate score the writing does not help or hurt you the writing does not help or hurt you some people think that the writing is attached to the English but it's not it's not so actually once you guys take the writing with your school once you take the writing, um, you really don't have to take the writing again. The math is the hardest. Kayla, yeah, I know it. I know it. The, the, the math is, is hard. The, Jemiah, the, the benchmark for English is an 18. You guys can definitely benchmark on the English. Yeah, you can, you can, you can. Now, listen, let me say this, and I'm going to get out of here. Um, please take advantage of the ACT June and July. There's going to be a June test and a July test. Make sure you guys take advantage of it, okay? I got to get out of here. Y'all gonna get me in trouble because it's almost 10 in Mobile and it's only like, um, what, eight o'clock here <laughs> in Las Vegas. And I'm gonna be here all week. Wishing you guys nothing but the best. If you have any more questions um, or whatever, Jerrica, introduction, sentence, three to four, six, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And intro topic and state your topics and your thesis. Yes, ma'am. Can you do a prayer, please? Jalen Parker. Jalen Parker says do a prayer, yes. Okay, so God... Thank you for all of these scholars who are watching tonight. We just thank God for them right now. We thank God for them being for being so proactive and so attentive while I covered all sections of the ACT. God, we want you to just open up their understanding, uh, bring everything back to their remembrance, bring back all of the math formulas, bring back all of the strategies and all of the tips and all of the skills that's going to help them be extremely successful on the ACT and help them to shine in their school and in the entire state of Alabama. God, we just want you to do this for them right now. 
each and every scholar who's under the sound of my voice, just open up their hearts and their mind and their understanding, allow them to uh, remember everything that we've gone over here on this live video and help them to remember everything that they covered in class with their with their uh, teachers and, and how they work with their peers. Just bring it all back to their remembrance so they can be ex uh, success on the ACT. Don't let them have any fear. Don't let them have any, any doubt that they can do it because we know God with you, all things are possible. And in you, there is no failure. And we consider it all done in Jesus name. Thank God. Amen. Okay, guys. So we cancel all doubt. We cancel all fear. We cancel all brain freezes. We are, I'm, I'm, I'm just sending um, blessings your way. And I know that you guys can do this. If you try, you can do it. If you try, just try it. And I believe you can do it in Jesus name. Thank God, amen. I am getting out of here because y'all need to go to bed. I enjoyed hanging out with you guys. Have a good one. I'm Dr. West. Take care.